I just want to thank and praise y'all, the Almighty, the one who sits high and looks low on me. And I want you guys to get ready to enter into the uncomfortable zone. Because y'all like put this message on my heart. Now, initially when he gave it to me, I was kind of like, um, okay. But as I began to study it out to present it to you guys, it was really ministering to me. And usually that's how it happens. The messages that I get are usually to me first and then to everybody else. But I was getting so convicted during this message. And then I understood why Yahweh had me to do this message, you know. So I want you guys to get ready to enter into the uncomfortable zone. I do believe that my topic today will address probably, I'll say, 75% of us in here in some degree or another, something that all of us may struggle with. So I don't think it's going to be one of those feel-good kind of messages, but my hope is that you will be blessed by the message like I've been blessed by it. So before I get into my topic, I want everybody to turn to Romans chapter 1. I just want to look at something before we go there. I know you guys are all curious to know what it is, but you have to wait. Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 28. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Elohim that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So what we have here is a list of unrighteousness, a list of iniquity, a list of things that Yahweh considers to be sinful. Now, the interesting thing about lists, the Bible's full of lists. There's lists all through the Bible of different things. And what we have a tendency to do is we look at a list like this and we immediately start thinking about different individuals. You know, we can see other people in the list. But I'm challenging you guys today to look at the list and see yourself. Okay? Everybody work hard here. This is going to be some exercise for some of us to not think about your neighbor or somebody else but just to think about how these verses apply to you in your life, okay? So that's the first thing. I want you guys to focus on you and not anybody else. Now, another thing that we as people tend to do when we look at a list such as this is we kind of categorize things. We look at the list and we see that some of these things are really bad and some of them not so bad. And usually the ones that are really bad are the ones that I'm not doing. Those are really bad. And the ones that are just a little bit bad or not too bad, those are the ones I might dabble in occasionally, okay? So, for instance, you know, I might look at this list and I might say, haters of God. Oh, if they don't repent, they're going to hell. I mean, haters of God. That isn't worse than disobeying your parents. They're not even in the same category, right? Hating God has to be worse than disobeying your parents. Or I might look at this list and say, murder. Uh, Life for life. You know, if you commit murder, you're going to hell if you don't repent. You're going to be punished. But that isn't as bad as gossip. Is it? Or I might look at this list and say, fornication. Oh, if you're fornicating, you're sinning against your body. You're going to hell. You better repent. You better come out of that. But my pride is not as bad as your fornication. And we have a tendency to do that. But I want you guys to understand what Romans is saying. It says anybody who practices such things. It's inclusive of all of those things. All of those things are worthy of death. 
All of those things. All of those things. So we got to be very careful. What I want us to do today is recognize that my topic is on this list. My topic today is on this list. I'm not going to do the whole list because I believe each and every one of those is a full message all by itself. But my topic is in the list. And I want you to keep in mind as we progress that it is a sin worthy of death. That's what the word said. I didn't say it. That's the, the word said that. All right? Keep that in mind. Because what I'm going to talk about today affects the majority of us. I see it in my children. I see it in myself. I see it in a lot of you. And a lot of times I don't believe that we even acknowledge it as a sin. I don't think we even recognize that it is a sin. So we dismiss it. We excuse it. We minimize it. We justify it. We don't deal with it. And I want you guys to understand that unrepentant sin in your life is poisonous. It's toxic. If you have unrepentant sin in your life, in other words, you have a sin that you are committing and you're not dealing with it, you're not struggling with it, you haven't repented of it, you're not seeking to get deliverance from it, but you're just embracing it and keeping it and coddling it, treasuring it, excusing it and minimizing it and justifying it, guess what's going to happen? That sin is going to become a stronghold in your life, a stronghold. It's going to be fortified in you. It's going to get bigger than you, and you're not going to be able to put it down. You're going to need a deliverance from Yahweh to remove it from you, okay? I want you to understand that these things listed here are worthy of death. Do you know that death is separation from Yahweh? All sin separates from Yahweh, all sin. So we need to acknowledge that we have these things in our life, and then we need to repent, and we need to deal with them. So my topic today dun, 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 is envy, jealousy. Envy, by definition, to feel uneasiness, mortification, or discontent at the sight of superior excellence, reputation, or happiness enjoyed by another, to repine at another's prosperity, to fret or grieve oneself at the real or supposed superiority of another. The Vine's definition, the feeling of displeasure produced by witnessing or hearing of the advantage or prosperity of others. Envy, ill will, jealousy, spite, covetousness, rivalry, resentment, competition, comparison. Envy desires to deprive another person of what they have. It seeks to level the playing field. As long as I'm on top of the pyramid, I'm okay. You can be blessed. Y'all, it can work in your life. As long as your blessing isn't greater than my blessing, I'm okay with it. But I have to be on the top. If you're better than me or have more than me, and it stirs up a feeling of uneasiness, mortification, or discontent, you, my friends, suffer with this sickness called envy. Envy, jealousy. Envy is a sin. We already seen it in Romans, right? And in Peter, it talks about rid yourself of all things, and envy is included in that list too. Rid yourself of this. So we already know that it's a sin. But we have to acknowledge that it's a sin. Okay, knowing it and acknowledging it in your life is two different things. So we have to acknowledge that it's a sin. Right now, I want to address the mighty me's in each one of you. See, all of us, we have a mighty me inside. Me is my fleshly desire. Me is the part of me that could care less about Yahweh and what Yahweh desires for my life. Me is warring against the spirit of Yahweh in my life. So that's what I'm addressing right now, the mighty me inside each one of us. The me is supposed to die daily. We are called to die to ourselves, recognizing that we've been bought with a price. We are not our own. Now, we know that in our head. But if we're envious or jealous, we obviously don't know that where it counts. Because it's not about me. It's about Yahweh in me. It's no longer I, but Yeshua in me. Or that's how it's supposed to be, right? So it's supposed to be all about Yahweh, all about him. But envy is just the opposite. Envy says it's all about me. 
Do you see how this goes against the spirit of Yahweh? It's all about me. It's not supposed to be about me. It's this sense of entitlement. You know, our society today fosters this attitude that we deserve something. We think we deserve nothing but the best. We deserve the recognition. We deserve the credit, the praise. We deserve it all. This entitlement thing. But we know what the scripture says. We're not deserving of any good thing. We don't deserve anything but hellfire. That's what we deserve. But for the grace of Yahweh, there go I. We don't deserve any good thing. But in this society, this sense of entitlement, I deserve something. This is the beginning of getting caught up in this trap of envy. It's the keeping up with the Joneses thing. I mean, the reality is, if the whole world were blind, we wouldn't have, we, our whole economy would collapse. Because nobody would be able to compare anything or compete with anybody. You wouldn't be able to see what you don't have. Less of the flesh, less of the eyes, the pride of life right? So we need to recognize that we do not have this worldly attitude. We're not entitled to anything. We're not deserving of any good thing. If we can get that, then we won't have this attitude of me, 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 and what I deserve. Because our worth in this realm is based on our possessions and our accomplishments. But Yahweh's not measuring us by that. That's not his standard of judging. He's, he's judging us by the righteousness of Yeshua, not our possessions, not our status, not our money, not our homes, but we get caught up in a worldly uh, thought process. And so we're content with our things until somebody else accomplishes more or somebody else gets more. And then all of a sudden, the blessing that we were so happy with, we're not happy anymore because somebody else has something better. So now I've lost my joy. Because I'm looking at your blessing, and it's bigger than mine. And I already told you, you can get blessed, but just can't be bigger than my blessing. You got to stay with me or beneath me. You cannot go above me, okay? Y'all understand, right? It's all about me. I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. Yahweh Almighty is supposed to get all glory, honor, and praise. Y'all heard the all, right? So where does that leave room for you to get the praise or the credit? or the recognition, or the accolades, the applause. Where does that leave room for you if he gets it all? He gets it all. But envy says, no, you don't get it all, Yahweh. It's about me. I want the glory. I want the praise. I want your recognition, your credit. I want it. Sounds a little bit like uh, Satan. We know that Satan got kicked out of heaven because of his pride which was rooted in his jealousy of Yahweh. He wanted Yahweh's power and position. He actually said, I want to be God. I want to be God. When you are a glory hound, seeking the glory and the praise and the recognition, glory that's supposed to go to Almighty Yahweh, you are saying, I want to be God. I want what is deserving of my heavenly Father. I want it for myself. It got Satan kicked out of the kingdom. It's a serious, saints. This isn't something that we should just dismiss or overlook. I want you to understand that when you're envious, you're in a battle with Yahweh. Because envy resents Yahweh's decision, and it is his decision, his choice, his way, to bless somebody with something that you think you deserve more than them. Envy resents Yahweh's goodness to others and misses the goodness that Yahweh is showing to you in your life. Because your whole focus is on somebody else. So the first thing we need to is admit if we have this in our life. Acknowledge it as a sin before Yahweh. Repent of that sin. James 3.14 says, If you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Acknowledge it for what it is. Admit that you have this in your life. Ask Yahweh to help you to overcome it. Get your eyes off of everybody else and focus on what he's trying to do in your life. We have to stop excusing stuff. It says it's worthy of death. We need to acknowledge this. We don't want to be the ones that stand before him and he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Because you practice lawlessness. You practice all these things that he lists in Romans. You practice them. In the Bible, there's so many different scriptures that talk about jealousy. 
I mean, it's unbelievable how many of the saints mentioned in Scripture had struggles with jealousy. I mean, there's so many different stories you could use to expound on this. I mean, it's just, I was, wow. You know what I mean? This is much bigger than I thought. Cain and Abel. Cain was so jealous of Abel's sacrifice that he allowed his jealousy to cause him to murder his own brother because he was jealous. Joseph's brothers, they were so envious of him because of the favor that their father showed to him that they thought it a good idea to sell him into slavery. And not only did they try to destroy Joseph's life, but they broke their father's heart. They allowed the father to believe that his beloved son Joseph was dead. They let this man grieve for a boy who wasn't dead at all, but sold off into slavery. What about his mother? What about his brother Benjamin? The whole family was grieving at the loss of this son, who these boys thought it a good idea because of their jealousy, sold him into slavery. Jealousy will make you do some crazy stuff. It leads to other sins. In Numbers 16, Korah and about 250 other Israelites were jealous of Moses and Aaron's status. They wanted to be the leaders. They said they were equal to Moses. But in the end, Yahweh destroyed them because of their envy. King Saul and David. David, Saul has killed his thousands and David tens of thousands, was the chant of the people. The people loved David. They adored David. And Saul was jealous. He was jealous. His throne was threatened. He said, what else is there for him? My kingdom? And he allowed his jealousy to stir up in him until he sought for David's life. Because he figured if I kill him, he can't take my throne, right? Jealousy. Envy was one of the sins that led to Yeshua's crucifixion. In Mark 15, it says, For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. They were jealous of him, jealous that the people were receiving his teachings and they were following him. And he had more and more and more people and they were turning away from the false teachings of the chief priests. They were jealous. So they had to put an end to him. Jealousy. Story after story after story. Proverbs says it will rot your bones. We have to examine ourselves, saints. See, it's easy for us to see jealousy in the lives of these Bible characters or each other. But at the end of the day, we want to stand before a holy God and give an account. And we don't want to have this blemish. We don't want to have this thing rooted in us. We don't want them to look at it and say, hey, what is that? We got to repent of such things. If you are caught up in this jealous nature, you cannot grow in the love of Yahweh. It's impossible. You cannot. Let's look at a couple ways that jealousy may manifest itself. Now, we already know the definition of it. Discontent and uneasiness. You can't really be happy for somebody else. That's jealousy. So if you have it, you know what I'm talking about. Do you feel a little jealous when somebody owns more than you? Or when they have a better job than you? or they're more attractive than you, or they speak more eloquently than you, or they're smarter than you, or thinner than you, or drive a bigger car, have a bigger house, have a happier marriage, get better grades than you, dance better than you, sing better than you. Do you have that uneasy feeling, that discontent? Do you get jealous of their popularity and all the friends they seem to have? This is jealousy, saints. This is what we need to address. I want you to understand that this is not synonymous to the secular world. We have this right in the church. There's people in churches that are jealous of people's positions. Well, I think I would be a better leader than him. He shouldn't be leading. He don't know what he's doing. I would do better. Well, I think I should get the solo because I think I sing better than her. Or somebody gives somebody some applause and they say, oh, that was a beautiful song you sang. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I sang too. She didn't say that to me. 
my song wasn't beautiful. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just negative. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I believe that we have far more jealousy in our lives than we really want to acknowledge. More than we realize, maybe. But we need to recognize that jealousy has very damaging effects spiritually. It almost always causes strife. Whether it's strife within yourself, which is the war of the flesh and the spirit, because it's not of Yahweh. Jealousy is not of Yahweh. And so as your fleshly man is trying to hold on to the envy and jealousy, your spiritual man is trying to fight against it. Strife. But even strife one to another with each other. It stirs up coveting. Coveting. I want what you got. The Tenth Commandment. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's things. But jealousy will make you covet some stuff. You'll see somebody say, oh, I want that house. I want that man. I want that job. I want that car. I want, I want, I want. Stirs up coveting in us. It fosters ungratefulness. This is a big one. This is a big one. I was listening to Maya's testimony. I was like, okay, Maya's in my message. It fosters ungratefulness. Instead of appreciating all the blessing that Yahweh is pouring out in your life, all the wonderful things he's doing for you, all the beautiful ways he's using you to minister to other people and be an example and be a light, you can't see any of that because you're too busy looking over here at so-and-so. And you're not happy because it seems like their blessing is bigger than yours. It seems like their ministry is bigger than yours. It seems like they're able to do something better than you. So now all of a sudden, I'm not content. I'm ungrateful. Ungratefulness. It destroys the love that we should have one for another. Second of the two great commandments, love thy neighbor as yourself. Love one another. In 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter, it says, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy. Love does not envy. I want you to understand that it is impossible to be jealous of somebody and love them the way that Yahweh requires for us to love them. Jealousy pushes the love out of the picture. It's not about them anymore. It's about me. I took it back to me. It's all about me. A good example of this is King Saul and David. King Saul was so jealous of David and so fearful that he was going to take his throne and so crazed by the idea that the people adored David more that he sought to take his life. But then there's Jonathan. Jonathan, the son of Saul, was next in line to get the throne. So if David were after the throne, Jonathan should have felt threatened, right? Jonathan's next in line to get the throne. But the scripture says that Jonathan loved David as he loved his own soul. Do you see the difference between Saul and Jonathan? The difference was the love. Saul was jealous and Jonathan was not. He wasn't jealous because he loved David. Love and jealousy cannot occupy the same space. When a loving person sees somebody who is receiving a blessing, they should be glad and rejoice. You should rejoice. I think of Paul when he was in prison. Turn with me to Philippians 1. Philippians 1, 12 to 18. I wanted to share this because this just really makes the point. First... Philippians 1, first chapter, um, 12 to 18. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. At this time, Paul's in prison, and he's writing a letter to the saints while he's in prison. So that my bonds in Messiah are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in, in the master, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Messiah of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel." 
What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Messiah is preached, and therein do I rejoice, yea, I will rejoice. Now what we have here is Paul is in prison. And while he's in prison, other people are rising up and preaching the gospel message. And they're getting accolades for it. You know, people are following them and receiving the teachings. And some of them are doing it for selfish ambition. And some of them are doing it for a genuine love for the Father. Now, Paul doesn't get jealous while he's sitting in jail and they're out here doing what it is he used to do. He had a spirit that says, I don't have any envy because the kingdom is being furthered. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. I can't be jealous because people have picked up where I left off in doing the work of Yahweh. He could have very easily been jealous of them. He's sitting in prison and they're out here getting all the glory for preaching a gospel message. Love rejoices in other people's success. See, we have to learn how to be happy for other people, genuinely happy, not that fake, oh, good job. I mean, genuinely happy, just like a parent is for their child. You know, when your child accomplishes something, you have joy for them. You're happy for them. It's supposed to be like that one to another. I should be happy to see you receive a blessing. I should be happy to see you get more, gain more, be more. I should be happy for you. The scripture commands us to rejoice with those that rejoice. But for many of us, this is a struggle. And you know why it's a struggle? Because you're jealous. Because you're jealous. You can't be happy for anybody else because you're too busy trying to outdo everybody in everything. And if somebody supersedes you in something, now they're actually the enemy. I have to dethrone them. They're in my spot. I got to bring them down. I mean, the reality is the only people who will try to tear you down in this life are the people who are beneath you. People above you ain't worried about you. You know what I'm saying? It's people beneath you who are trying to pull you down, bring you down to their level or below so they can feel good about themselves, right? We are supposed to rejoice when people rejoice. But I have a little exercise for you guys. And this works. I know because I was a jealous person. It works. If you can't rejoice with somebody in their blessing, rejoice in the fact that we serve a great God, that we serve a God who shows up and shows off, that we serve a God who rains his blessing down on all of us. See, I can rejoice in the goodness of Yahweh. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, you might have been the one to reap the blessing, but it was my God who did it. Hallelujah. I can rejoice in my God, right? That's where you begin. Recognizing Yahweh's hand in somebody's life. You should always be ready to rejoice when you see a move of Yahweh, no matter whose life it's in. When I see Yahweh move, oh, my God is alive. Hallelujah. My God is real. He's awesome. He can do anything, everything. He's ever present. Hallelujah. That's my God. My God. Hallelujah. We should be able to rejoice when we see Yahweh moving in somebody's life. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. When, my, when uh, Inez gave her testimony and she was talking about, I'm having a heart chain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. I want to hear that. I want to rejoice with you. I want to encourage you. I want you guys to know that we are only as strong as a body as the weakest link. It's in all of our best interests for all of us to come up higher in him. All of us, rejoice when you see somebody overcoming. Rejoice when you see somebody lay some sin aside that so easily beset them. Rejoice when people get further in life. Rejoice, be happy for them. That's what the scripture says. Rejoice with those who rejoice. A good example of this is the prodigal son. The prodigal son is coming home to his father. The father runs to meet him, kisses him, puts his robe on him, prepares a feast for him. But the older brother is not happy. The older brother is jealous. The older brother is saying, I've been faithful to my father. I didn't go out here and waste my life partying. I didn't grieve my father. Why am I not getting this royal treatment? He didn't throw a feast for me. I've been here this whole time. 
He was so consumed with his jealousy, he could not rejoice in the fact that his brother that was considered dead is now come home to the father. He couldn't rejoice in that. He couldn't rejoice that his father, who was grieving the loss of his son, has had his joy restored in the return of his son. He couldn't rejoice with his father. He was too jealous. He was too much focused on himself. What about me? Spiritually, it's just like the sinner who goes out in the world and engages in all kinds of wickedness and perverseness. And then they return into the fold of Father Yahweh. Hallelujah! We should be rejoicing. And Yahweh is faithful to restore them. And they begin to move in the gifts and minister. And Yahweh's using them. They're a yielded vessel. And they're growing in him. And all of a sudden, you're looking and you're jealous. And then you start reminding everybody of all the stuff they did. Oh, but you know what she did. She was like, mm, 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 mm. she ain't no better than me. Jealous. Jealous. Want to bring your past up. You know what I do when people bring my past up? I say, you know what? And Yahweh delivered me out of it all. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if he could deliver me out of that, how about you? How about you? Don't let nobody hold your past over your head. Yahweh don't. Yahweh don't hold it over you. You repent, he's faithful to restore. He don't remind you of what you did. He don't hold it over your head. You get a brand new mercy, a clean slate. Jealousy brings up the history. Seeking to knock you down. Seeking to elevate oneself. Jealousy. Jealousy causes us to compare ourselves to others. Comparison breeds competition and rivalry. Them don't even sound like good things in y'all, right? Comparison will get you into trouble. It will either lead you to be prideful, you'll be comparing yourself to somebody and walking around saying, well, I'm better than you. Or it will lead you to be envious. I want what you got. Either way, Both of them are on that list of sins worthy of death, pride and envy. Quit comparing yourself. You want to measure yourself against something? Measure yourself against the righteousness of Yeshua because that is the standard by which you will be judged. You will be judged by that standard. See, when you stand before this holy God to give an account, you don't get to take the baddest person you know with you to make you look better. It's just you. It's just you. And Yahweh is not concerned about anybody else when he's dealing with you. You don't get to say, well, so-and-so was worse off than me. Well, we're not talking about so-and-so. We're talking about you. What about you? You. We need to quit comparing ourselves. My children kind of do this all the time. You know, they look at what I do for one of them or the other, and then it's like they're comparing and weighing it out. And somehow it matters to them what I do for one or the other, because they're questioning my goodness in their life. Does she love him more, favor him more? You did that for her, but you can do that for me. Jealousy, you know? A while ago, they used to always say, it's not fair. It's not fair. Now, I got a lot of kids. I used to hear this a lot. It's not fair. It's not fair. It used to get on my nerves. Everything I do, it's not fair. So then I started this little thing I would do with them. As soon as I would hear any of them, it's not fair. I said, you know what? Life is not fair. It was not fair that Yeshua went to Calvary in my place. It was not fair that he suffered a horrible death for my sin. You're right. Life is not fair. Praise Yahweh, life is not fair. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, I don't get what I deserve. My kids got so sick of hearing that. I kid you not, I haven't heard it's not fair in a very long time. Will y'all attest to that? I don't hear that anymore. Thank you, Yahweh. Life isn't fair. Be thankful life's not fair. And you don't get what you deserve. Hallelujah. 
What they're doing is they're doubting my goodness intentions towards them when I'm blessing one of my other children. And we are no different when it comes to Father Yahweh. If we're resenting the blessing that he's doing in someone else's lives, we are missing what he's trying to do in ours. A good example of this is Peter. Peter denied Yeshua three times. After Yeshua resurrected, He's sitting down with his disciples, and he's telling Peter how he's going to die for Yahweh's glory. He's letting him know that he's going to be a martyr, basically. And the first thing that Peter says is, what about John? And Yeshua says, if I let John live until I come again, what does it matter to you? What does it have to do with you? His whole focus was on John. He should have been rejoicing in the fact that he was restored, that Yeshua forgave him and restored him and let him know that you were going to die for the glory of Yahweh, giving him a reassurance that, yes, you denied me those three times, but you won't do it again. You're going to die for my glory. He was trying to encourage him, but he didn't receive it because he too worried about John. What about John? What about John? Comparison, never, never good. We have to remember that each one of us is specially made by Yahweh. Each one of us. Every single one of us matter to him. We don't have any reason to be insecure. You know, measuring yourself against other people is insecurity in you. It just shows that you feel inferior in some regard or another. So Yahweh says to us, I made you. I made you just the way you are. I created you in your inmost being. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I know how many hairs you have on your head. I have given you everything you need to fulfill the specific purpose that I have for your life. Everything you ever need to do what Yahweh has for you to do, you have it. You already have it. He has equipped you for his plan for your life. And no other person can fulfill the plan that he has for you. It's yours, all yours. So what if somebody has more money than you? You don't need it for Yahweh's plan for your life. Because if you did, you would have it. So what if somebody sings better than you? You don't need it for Yahweh's plan for your life. Because if you did, you'd have it. It doesn't matter if somebody can prophesy with the tongues of angels and you can't because you don't need it for the purpose that Yahweh has for your life. Because if you did, he would provide it. Amen. He has given us exactly what it is that we need for our calling in him. So we need to get our eyes off of everybody else and what they're doing and what they're getting and refocus on what Yahweh wants to do in our life. We need to practice an attitude of gratitude. We need to be thankful for the blessings that we do have. Just like Maya said in her testimony, you look at something as a negative until you see something worse. And then you recognize that it could be worse. And all of a sudden, she's thanking Yahweh for her eczema. What is that? Me and Michaela, we had the same situation. We're doing training for the 5K. We're running 90 seconds, walking 90 seconds. That 90 seconds was killing us, wasn't it, Ray? Killing us. This last week, we had to bump it up to three minutes, run three minutes, walk three minutes. After running three minutes, walking three minutes, we embraced the 90 seconds. Don't we, Ray? We like the 90 seconds. 90 seconds is good. It's good. It's good. So, I mean, we really need to focus on being thankful for what we have. Because the more grateful you are, the less prone to jealousy you will be. When I focus on Yahweh's plan for my life, competition becomes irrelevant. There's no need to compare yourself to anybody else because your journey is not their journey. Y'all aren't on the same journey. Each one of us have our own calling in Yahweh. It's individual. It's personal. What he's doing in my life is for the plan he has for me. And what he's doing in your life is for the plan he has for you. And they're not necessarily the same thing. So we don't have to worry about comparing ourselves. When I have my complete focus on doing and being what Yahweh made me to be, it really doesn't matter what other people are doing. 
like Yeshua said to Peter, what does it have to do with you? What does that have to do with you? What are you focusing on? If your focus is not on the glory and kingdom and will of Yahweh, it will be on something or someone else. When your focus is wrong, you compare yourselves to other people. If you find yourself doing that, you're jealous. If you're ungrateful for what you have, you're jealous. Because what you have is a lot more than what some other people have. They would love to be in your place. If your focus is, um, if you're discontent and never satisfied, then you're jealous of something because you think there's more for you. Always seeking to gain more for yourself. Whether it's position, recognition, credit, glory, praise, stuff, whatever it is. We need to practice contentment. It is impossible to be impossible to be content to show the love of Yeshua one to another and be jealous at the same time. Let us quit looking at the grass is greener syndrome and bloom where Yahweh has planted us. Hallelujah. Let me